by the river. We are back, and it's kind of an off-season pod, guys, where we'll talk about some of the news and notes with our Philadelphia Union. And, of course, we're going to look at what's been going on. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little bit of tournament over in Guitar. It's called the World Cup, and we're going to talk about what's been going on so far. So, ladies and gentlemen, don't you dare anywhere because you do not want to miss this episode of Duke by the River. And let's get this started, guys. Eh, done! Duke by the River... Doesn't do anything well. There is not one. Do by the river. Doesn't do anything well. There is not one. I- I'm sorry. There was no creativity. As a union fan, I take that all day. Another DP. We need to go get Mario Balotelli. And that is right. Welcome, everyone, to Do By The River, the show where we follow everything Philadelphia Union. And, of course, we are brought to you by Philly Sports Network. Before we dive into today's episode of Do By The River, welcome, everybody, on in. If you are watching live on El Parcero Philly's YouTube channel, thank you so much for tuning on in. Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe for your future viewing of Do By The River. And a reminder, we are also on uh, find us where we should podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, under by the river podcast ladies and gentlemen joined by with me as always is my man justin off-season podcaster friedberg justin first off man i know it's been tough with the mls cup in the way that ended but has the world cup helped a little bit man what's going on um yeah you know it's it's been good to get back in you know into really into soccer i you know do love now the uh the you know the start of uh four games a day for a uh, a nice a nice stretch you know it was it was wild to to see some of the results today um yeah but having soccer basically all day you know especially for me uh you know for thanksgiving where uh listen let's be honest the early uh nfl games are usually duds so by the time the second game uh kicks off we'll uh you know we'll have plenty of uh you know, we'll we'll have plenty of actual uh, entertaining uh, football to uh, to to go on. So, now, honestly, this is this is this has been a fun. You know, this will be a fun uh, few weeks stretch. So I'm uh, I'm, you know, I, I think I think it's uh, softened the blow a bit. Just distraction. Absolutely, and like now that like things have kind of calmed down in my Philadelphia sports world with the Union Philly season are over. Having this kind of trickle in with like some afternoon sports watching, it's great. I mean, dude, this is literally the drug of choice for soccer fans, as I always say, because every game is pretty damn good. And like you mentioned, you have three, four games a day. So it's like, let's get it, man. Let's get it while we have it, right? Every four years, Justin. Every, you know what else, too, Justin? You know what I find funny? Every four years, um, there's a crap ton of Americans who are now soccer fans. Dude, everyone's talking to us. Everyone knows soccer. Like what do you think? It's easy. Every four years, this happens. Man. Yeah, and I think especially this year, I think with how amazing the MLS Cup final was, and how many non, you know, those typical people that only watch it every four years. Well, because you know, MLS Cup final was November fifth, and the first game was you know the twentieth. I-, I think you like. I think you didn't have that kind of layoff of oh well how they can pick up the momentum. Well, the World Cup, it, it you know picks up, and then next thing you know, it you know MLS starts and a few. So like, I think this is a great time to kind of pick up on the momentum. So you know having the probably the best MLS Cup final, that I think we, you know definitely top five we've ever had, mm-hmm. leading right into the World Cup was a, a pure happenstance stroke of you know of, of luck. Yeah, man, it, that we definitely have benefited with the scheduling because it's definitely helped with the progression of our game here in the United States. It's been definitely great. Um, but Justin, I, I do want to talk about the World Cup, but you know, we haven't been on a week. We took a week off after the season because you know just, we deserve a little bit off time as well. But Justin, there's a couple of things I do want to discuss real quick that we haven't been able to discuss uh, before we dive into some World Cup stuff. So um, first of all, I wanted to get your thoughts on the Apple TV. Uh, it was dropped last week, fourteen ninety nine. Well, the plan, right? So the plan for subscription. Right now, it looks like a fourteen ninety nine a month subscription or a ninety nine dollar a year if you want to pay it all off. Now, if you already have Apple TV, it is going to be twelve ninety nine a month, seventy nine dollars a year. Now, 
if you compare this to what the other major four leagues offer you, it's definitely cheaper. Justin, I guess the, because the question is, do you think that for the first year of introducing the new streaming service for MLS fans, is this conducive for continuing the growth of our game? Man? I think so. Um, the the one I think the one caveat that this deal obviously doesn't think is um, for all current season ticket holders, uh, it, you sure, will sure. get a, a a free a free you know lo- a login for for that MLS add on. Um, it is one per account though, so if you have multiple tickets on an account, unfortunately, it is only one you know account. But say you know, say you average about fifteen thousand season ticket holders, you know, across all the twenty four, you know, twenty four, uh, you know, sorry, twenty eight clubs at this point, and then you factor in all like, I think this is pretty good. And you said it is the cheapest, and you know, in the in the, the in terms of the major sports, um, the thing that I do love, uh, one is the uh, the standardized days and times. So the regular season games will be Wednesdays and Saturdays, Let's go. and seven thirty and ten thirty for the for the for the kickoff times. So having standardized times, I think, is much more conducive to kind of keeping things. Because like you would see it where like you'd have games, some games at seven, and then seven thirty, and then some games at eight, and eight thirty, and nine, and nine thirty, and it was such a weird staggered kickoff that it never made much sense to me. At least with these kickoffs, you know, like you can plan around things. You know how to work it. You can plan certain days. The fact that these are Wednesdays and Saturdays kind of makes things more interesting for for Champions League, for Open Cup, for Leagues Cup. You know, creates a lot of interesting uh, schedule conflicts. Schedule, you know, is going to test a lot of depth. Um, And I think... And I, listen, I, I think the the progression of the game, the progression of packages for sports leagues in general, it's it's going the way of streaming. Like, I, I think anyone that's like, oh, this is going to alienate the common fan. Like most people I know, I I do not know many people that have cable streaming services are the way. Like you know, I have Hulu Live TV. I know a lot of people that have Hulu Live TV or YouTube TV or Sling. Like, I, I think, you know, you're seeing the, and also the, you know, the, the particular group of fans that are, you know, they're getting, in, you know, really pulled in are people our age, people slightly older than us who have kids who are bringing their kids to the games. Like, it, the, the days of, oh, well, you know, this, this league is, soccer is going to grow momentum and you're doing, like, like the, especially in the last I'd say even five years is kind of really super accelerated the, the progression of the sport. And at this point, looking at, you know, the way that this, this league has slowly been rising. I think the biggest thing that people haven't even realized is this is going to help you gain a much bigger international audience because Apple TV is going to be available internationally. That's the one thing that, when it came to watching the, the game, you know, I know we know, you know, people, you know, overseas who would say that, like, you know, in England, you basically would get like either LA or like New York City. Like, there weren't many options. It was whatever they decided. And typically those were the, you know, those were the games. So I think you've expanded yourself now to obviously you're not going to start, oh my God, you're going to start getting everyone around the world. But, it's like how Paramount Plus, you know, like I can watch, you know, the Argentinian league, and I can watch, you know, in ESPN, I can watch the, you know, the all you know, the, the Dutch league and the Belgian league, and even like Indian soccer and like AFC, you know, qualification. Like, I I think the the game is it's a global game, and it's becoming more accessible for a lot more people. And I think this in general will help, will help, you know, especially with, you know, it, you know, international, you know, TV rights have always been kind of quite like, like, especially, you know, as someone who tries to watch Con Mabel qualifying and you know, the disaster 
that is their TV rights. Like the fact that this standardizes the TV rights for the MLS is is massive in terms of you know potentially gaining a, a small foothold in the international market. Okay, so here's kind of my thing with it. I feel like, you know, even like as short of a time as like four years ago, I don't know if I could have fit this in my budget with how expensive cost of living is. Overall, I mean, my theory in general is that we're all going to be screwed regardless, especially as sports fans, because you're all going to have to probably have to pay for a separate subscription to watch the NFL, the NBA, and MLS, et cetera, right? So I think in general, we're all just going to have to suck it up and we're going to have to pay for these subscriptions. I, I guess my main concern, and it was something we talked about before when this was all announced, was the casual fan. Look, I, I, I'm not saying that like we should prioritize that because at the end of the day, if you like the product, you will watch it, right? But like, you know, someone who just watched the MLS Cup, like let's say some, we gain a lot of new fans, right, Justin, over this MLS Cup here in Philadelphia. Some of these new fans who are used to watching the Phillies, the Sixers, the Flyers on NBC Sports Philly, watching the Birds on Fox, ESPN, whatever it may be, now having to tell these guys, hey, you know, you got you want to watch the Union this weekend? Well, you kind of need Apple TV and how that will go about. I, I think at the end of the day, the situation, time will tell how successful this will be. I mean, the TV numbers have been spectacular even for the World Cup. I mean, I, JT's been dropping the World Cup numbers. We've been killing it. I think we we're a top five market for the U.S. game. Fantastic. We were the number one market um, re, uh, regional-wise for the MLS Cup as well. So that's great as well. So I think we're with this situation, time will tell. But we now know. We now know the, the what, what the guidelines are, how much you have to pay. Apple TV's here, guys. And next thing I think, Justin, now is we want to see what the production will look like. Who's going to call these games? What will pregame, postgame show look like? So I think that's going to be the next step here for us, Justin. I think so. I'm assuming that you're probably going to pull a lot of the, uh, the you know the the best you know guys. Like obviously, JP is probably going to be high on that list. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming maybe the the some of the Fox guys like Rob and Stu and John Straw. Like, like I think the the the, the names you know maybe like a, a Tony Miola, a Brian Dunseth. Like, like, I mean, you're gonna pull names. Um, I mean, they are doing that that roundabout, you know, roundabout goal lasso show kind of style show. So I, I think that is gonna be massive. I think that's more like, at least for me, when I watch Champions League stuff in Europa League, having that 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 goal lasso show is super helpful, so that I can like it'll take me from game to game to game, and it'll show me it'll cut to a game if there's a goal, or like like it bounces around. It gives you a nice nice you know opportunity and you know I, I understand the the whole idea of losing the casual fan but i think even the casual fans now are it, again i've said this it's going the way of streaming and if like and i think especially people our age and younger are really pushing you know the people that are you know, you know paying those bills you know <laughs> our parents and the in the younger parents like <laughs> that they're pushing you know push towards soccer so i think at the end of the day it's not going to be as bad as people think it is and right. if people going to want to watch soccer they're going to find the way and it's also might encourage more people to get season tickets because as i said free season ticket holders get you know that free subscription so you know that's a bonus you don't have to pay that you know potentially 80 bucks a, a year so this just the moral of the story is get your season tickets, ladies and gentlemen. One eight hundred unitics dot com. I don't know. <laughs> Go get no, your- I mean, I mean, it, listen, it's 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 not a bad idea, and at the very least, that you know, and like I said, it's you know, the, as the game's growing, the season ticket holders are. It's going to be a. I think you're going to see a, a increase in season, season ticket holders leading up to twenty twenty six. I think it's going to be a a, a a nice progression upwards. Uh, union sales department. We will. Uh, we would like to take some commission as well if you guys can. Oh no, don't worry. I I know I know some people in the ticket office. I'll I'll make sure my uh, my demands our demands are. Uh, are sent. <laughs> we know people, Justin. We know people. Uh, Justin, let's move forward here. Um, Pax and Aronson done deal. Look really good in the Antrag Frankfurt kit. Uh, Four million dollars plus incentives plus of course the almighty sell on clause. Any final thoughts on as Paxson is leaving Philadelphia, or he's actually in Frankfurt now? 
Um, I I think that's a four million is a pretty high number considering. Right. <laughs> like, like people are like, oh, like I, you know, of course, I, I, you know, my, my, you know, my dad, my dad is always kind of, you know, he's he's a union fan, but he's always kind of late on the news, obviously, because we're, it, you know, we're in deep in a, in a lot of it, and he goes, oh, four million, that seems low. I'm like. Well, you got to factor in that that price is absolutely boosted by his performance in the U twenty, uh, you know, the, the Concacaf, you know, championship. Like they absolutely balled out. You know, they they got the spot to the Olympics. In the few moments he did play, he did look good. But I think, especially this season, this was supposed to be the year that he stepped up, and well, Daniel Gosnick stepped up in like sure. in, in bucket loads. So four million as the base. Is, is a nice one then including the incentives that from what i've heard are not like crazy hard in terms to hit so that number will go up and a 20 percent sell-on cost which i think might be higher than brendan's if i uh, crazy. like or in that ballpark like 20 percent that's that's a big chunk of change that <laughs> you know for potentially for future and it goes to a team where like Frankfurt are, are one of those teams where I think I've like I've mentioned their name with like you know Kai or Brewer, like a lot of players that could go over there because they they are able to blend that young talent with some solid Santos Borre I mean, from Colombia, baby. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, you know, having you know uh, Mario Goza, you yeah. know, who's who really I can't believe he's there, man. <laughs> who's had a resurgence, you know, back in his career. People forget the veteran, you know, uh, you know, attacker Kamada, the Japanese international. He got yeah, playing his way into another. He's just like people forget about him, and he just keeps, just keeps balling out. You know that defense has been like slowly settling. I, I think, in the way they play, I think Paxton could easily come. You know, the break, especially with you know, especially with the the World Cup. Who knows what injuries will happen? Who knows? what players will be sold. I think Paxton going in there and now getting this month or so to really settle into the team. I think it's a perfect, I think it's a perfect time for him to get in there. So yeah, I, you know, I, I may have to, you know, I, I, I God, I may have to add that to the list of, you know, needing to get a, a Brendan Leeds Jersey might need to get a, a Paxton Frankfurt Jersey. Like, yeah, I swear this team, you know, these, you know, the, the union uh, homegrowns are going to bleed me dry with uh, other <laughs> other teams' jerseys. You still need that Fontana. You still need that. Different... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was going to say, listen, no, that's going to be that's going to be difficult to find. Just like uh, yeah, everyone who had difficulty getting a uh, a Mackenzie Genk uh, jersey, which I have not gotten because I've heard of how insanely difficult I heard the the shipping process was. So I bet it is, man. Um, real quick, have you checked out? The uh, the Brendan Aronson Ted Lasso mural thing at uh, no Kirby's. the funny thing is I know exactly where that is like I would have I, never guessed it dude never would have guessed it there man <laughs> the, the the funniest like that that kind of like that that building is like kind of tucked in off of seventy right and like I I was kind of over there and like actually yesterday I was my my dentist is right on Medford Main Street. So like I, I kept seeing people like going over there, and I'm like, I'm like, like wait, that barn looks oddly familiar. And then it started like getting like men, men in blazers, and I'm like, oh yeah, I know exactly where that building is. Like, yeah, I got, I got emotional, Justin. I, I honestly, when I was there, I got a little emotional um, because you know we see Brendan Aronson as a pup, and dude, it's really cool seeing what he's become, man. He's, yeah, a, he's one of the he, faces of this national team, dude. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as he popped onto the field, I was just like, "Man, a kid from Medford, New Jersey, it's wild, man, is repping the red, white, and blue <sighs> and the biggest stage." I'm like, oh, "It's beautiful, man." I'm like, a decade ago, you would that would have been a crazy thought for real, man, for real. I want to say a little real quick to Ivan. What's going on, brother? How about that Gareth Bale haunting the U.S. in the World Cup? Like, on the fans in the final. Yeah, we touched on that in the beginning, man. Dude, Gareth Bale. Yeah, listen to what Kevin can say. True, listen, he, he, Gareth Bale, top five Philly sports villain. Dude, I I can't stand that man. I can't believe you did that to us and in the World Cup, the U.S. Yeah, God, you know it. 
it's uh, it's yeah yeah gareth bale is, is 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 high on my shit list for real man for real um next bit of news uh berkey he's off to red bull a little bit shocking the news because the union apparently were in negotiations with him but obviously red bull were able to offer a little bit more a two-year deal with an option for a third year money was not been announced Let's, did you see something justin about money because i didn't find anything about the money no, I, I don't think it was necessarily money. I think it was the I think it was the deal. I don't think the year was prepared to offer a third year. Okay. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, I I do think that we could find an upgrade from Corey Burke, but it's not really even about that. It's not even about him going to the Rebel. I've even seen that. Like I put out that with that poll and I, people saying no or people saying that they would boo um uh Corey Burke. Like that I mean, come on, guys. At the end of the day, this is a business. But again, like we talked about Brennan, right, Justin? Like Corey Burke's story in its own, it's, it's beautiful as well, dude. Uh, coming over from Jamaica, growing with Bethlehem Steel. I actually saw a clip of Justin. Brendan, little Brendan, wearing 63 in the Bethlehem Steel with Corey Burke. Dude, that was that really gave me some serious flashbacks. Um, but yeah, he's he's going over to the Red Bull, and it's really all about, listen, you he's, what, 30 years old. Do what you got to do, man. Much love, much respect. When you come here, though, for 90 minutes, whether you're starting or not, or how much time you play, you are the enemy, but man, I just can't be more prouder of, of Corey Burke, brother. Yeah, you know, listen, I, I think the fact that again, the biggest thing was that the union weren't going to offer him that third year. I can totally get it. I mean, he's not going to be the starter here, it was going to be more of the same. Uh, you know, I think Red Bull gives him that chance to absolutely be the starter. It's a similar system, he knows what to expect. Um, I, I think the union, like, as much as, yeah, it's, it is disappointing. I think the the policy you can take is that, one, there, there are, like, this offseason, there's a lot of big name, you know, well-known MLS vets, like a, like a Tesho Akindele, an Ola Kamara, a Will Bruin. You know, there's some guys that could fit the system. I think Ola Kamara would be high on my list. Because I mean, he, people forget he's you know what, it's, you know two seasons you know two seasons removed now or even one season removed from tying for the golden boot with with Tati. Uh, he fits the pressing system. I think you you need us you need that veteran presence. You need someone that is gonna not get in the way of a, of a Riasco, a Marcus Zambrano in the next few years. And I think. I, I don't know if Corey would have kind of stunted that growth with some of these players. Um, listen, uh, I for having you know Corey since the beginning, I respect the hell out of him. You know, he had a very nice message to the fans. Like, listen, it, it is a business, and I respect him for you know for chasing that bag and getting what he thinks is best for him. And I've said that with you know, like when Casper left, like you do what's best for your career. It sucks when you leave, but at the end of the day. It is a business. It is your job, and you do what's best for you know what works for you and your family. And it's been like you know, like, like he has to go very far at the end of the day. I was gonna say a little two hour drive to, to North Jersey, but like no, I I, I I respect it. Like obviously, yeah, for ninety minutes, I'm gonna boo you, but you know, I I'll, I still respect the hell out of him, especially especially that you know, listen that that goal to cement the Eastern Conference final oh. win. Will still still lives, will will be in a top five union moment for me of all time. And Corey Burke will will never have to buy a a beer at the Larimer ever if he when he when he you know retires and comes back here. I will, I know that for certain. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. Corey, we love you, man. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. We'll see you very, very soon. But uh, it's it's unfair that you mentioned that because I wanted to finish off the Union Notes by talking a little bit about the presser last Friday. Um, Jim talked about some very telling things. Uh, first bit of first bit of, of tidbit that I took away from that presser, Justin. Um, so obviously we have a lot of competitions next year, right? So apparently what Ernst is saying, the player pool is going to increase this year to twenty seven to twenty eight players, and apparently they are looking at center back midfielder and another attacker does that get your juices going justin yeah listen i, I think you need listen the, the loss of stewart finley midseason was was big i think obviously you didn't need brendan craig or, or to step in but 
he was ready, but I still think he is young. I still think he has he you know he could use some time to really get into it. Um, so, I mean, it's always nice to have that third spider back, especially again with the increase in games this year. It's you're gonna need that depth. Uh, the midfielder, we've been talking about it. It ha- it, it's got to be a, a, an Ali Bedoya, you know, looking in the future replacement. Because, listen, Ali, you know he's coming back for the next year, but I think this has got to be it. Like, I, I think he's coming back knowing that they still have most of the team to really run it back. But I think you, if you want the most out of him, you're going to need to give him some help. And you really don't have a true Ali replacement. McGlynn, Jack McGlynn is more of a Regista type player, and he absolutely, I think, will get more minutes this year. But I think if you're going to have Ali involved, you you need to you need to give him a little bit of uh, a little a little bit of help and a little bit of rest. And getting an attacking player, I mean, it seemed kind of obvious when even you know it was. We still don't know what the evolution of Chris Donovan is going to be. We don't know how you know Jose Riasco or Quinn Sullivan. I think getting that veteran or getting a player that can can help you know provide those minutes and at least provide some of that additional leadership will be big. But I loved that Ernst and Jim were both like, "Yeah, we're not you know we're not you know we're not patting ourselves on the back and saying great job and just taking with what we got." No, we know what the increased workload is next year. We know what you know what what the you know what the fans want and the fact that they were like hey we want to run it back and here's the positions we think are needed and i think there's positions very much so that are need to be addressed in terms of depth so yeah you know what i loved i loved the fact that they were like you know what we're not settling we're 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 moving forward and that is absolutely it it gives me it gives me you know a lot of you know a lot of good a lot of, a lot of hope for the for the for the off season and in my head now I'm you know starting to run through the you know the you know the possibilities of the types of players that they they need and it kind of you know kind of you know gives me someone to uh, to look forward to until you know the, the world cup is over and the you know the, the jerseys start dropping yes sir yeah it is true that is true i, I think what it, what i'm interested about cuz when i hear center back right because obviously you got Glazes, you got Elliot. Um, to me, I want to see some Brandon Craig. Like I want to see some more from Craig, and I think that he can be your third guy. So like I feel like it would. This would be like what, like a veteran guy, someone that you can rotate. It's in and gonna be the interchange, not right? a Ryan Collin type vet, but it's probably gonna be a vet that has been around enough. Someone probably in like. I don't know, late twenties, like like Earth is like not someone who is kind of washed up, but someone who a, a journey a journeyman, someone who you know can give you those solid minutes. Um, based on the you know the the, the press conference as well, they did talk about formation changes, yes. potentially a back three, which I have said for the while that the union would excel in a back three, and I think if you're going to have a back three, it means that you're going to need some center back depth. Because I think Brandon Craig can, you know, has the athleticism for that. But I think you're also going to need some rotation and some ability to, you know, have guys, you know, get rest. So I, I'm, I, I think it's not so much a, a lack of trust in Brandon Craig. I think it's understanding that having your third center back be an untested young center back is something that most teams would go, yeah, I think we should shore that up a little bit just to kind of allow him the time to progress hey we threw mark mckenzie and austin trusty in the fire i'm just kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so that that so with that tactical flex but I, I i loved hearing that because i do think that if you were a little bit more flexible tactically you could bring in quinn sullivan more that's one thing i don't understand like i do get like you brought in Carranza and you brought in ure and like that would change some things but Sullivan's minutes decreased significantly uh, this past year, and I do think he fits more in an attacking role. We've seen him play as a shuttler uh, because of that, but um, that to me, I he needs to be part of the attack going forward, especially in the rotation. Yeah, I think part of that too was after the trade of Sergio was Corey stepping up 
I, I think you a lot of people did not see that that coming. So the fact that I think now that you even if with an attacker, I think it's going to be a competition. The players are going to get plenty of minutes, and I especially with the amount of games that are going to be played this year. So I think you'll see Quinn get more time than he did last year. We shall see, man. We shall see. It's going to be a fun offseason. Obviously, we will be keeping you guys up to date with everything that happens and all the rumors. Uh, so make sure you guys are subscribed to Dupe by the River. All right, Justin. It's your time to shine, brother. What happened, dude? What happened, man? We're going to talk about this. U.S., Wales, 1-1 one, one draw. Justin, I'm going to let you take this away, brother. Just kind of tell us what the F happened how did we draw to wales um so B wales operates in, a, in, a, in essentially a back five um and the u.s dominated possession in the first half they had a lot of the obviously the better chances the problem was i mean and you know was was getting in those the, those those one two passes and breaking down and getting in behind when they were able to, and it took them a little bit to get in behind. They started forcing chances. They forced a save off of almost an own goal. Um, you know, Josh Sargent hits the post, a lot of back and forth, and then you know Christian Pulisic, you know, plays with a with a nice interchange, plays in uh, Tim Weah with a beautiful touch through the middle. I mean, it was exactly what they needed the one moment, and it opens up the scoring. Um. I think Christian Pulisic didn't have his best game. Um, I I think it was clear there. Sometimes he was missing the that through ball right away. If he he would pick his he wouldn't pick his head up, and you'd see that runner. And if he had picked his head up, that ball would have been played, and it would have been in on net. Um, the second half, the U.S. was on the back foot. I think they they were defending well. Um, the the PK. It's a foul. I mean, Walker Zimmerman had did not have to do that. I think that bad, man. that's a play where you body him up and you force him to pass that ball back because I don't think you're he's going to allow him to turn. So I think that's a kind of a learning you know a learning curve. I think Tim Ream Tim Ream had an, an, an a very solid game. I think you know for the 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 true vet of the team. And the guy with, with the oldest guy on the team, and it wasn't even the guy who had the most experience. That was DeAndre Yedlin, who was the only player who was in the, at the last World Cup the U.S. qualified for. Um, uh, Brennan Aronson coming on and providing hey. a huge spark right away. I mean, he was hounding that that Wales midfield, and, forced, and they were forcing a number of yellow cards. Um you know, unfortunately, like you know, Haji Wright wasn't really able to get into the game. I think by that point, the U.S. was forcing it. Um, overall, it was a slightly disappointing result. I mean, you still got a point that was massive. Um, the officiating, I say, well, absolutely terrible. Um, the ref, a lot of a lot of silly calls, um, stopping the play for injuries that weren't head injuries. I mean, he was consistent about it. But I did not understand the, you know, why he, why he was doing the you know that specific thing, the 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 yellow cards giving two yellow cards to you know. I understand Weston's was, but the like the first one really wasn't, and it took a while for Wales to be given that first yellow, and I, I think the disparity of the calls was massive. It was. It, it, it threw off the momentum of the game. I don't think either team was really able to get into a particular groove because of the poor officiating. And, you know, unfortunately that's, at least, you know, that can kind of throw off a game massively when, it, when the ref is, is dictating the game in not a great manner. And listen, I, I think, it would have been great to get three points. Um, I think obviously you, at this point you, you you know put that aside and you turn your attention now to a massive game against England on Friday. This I think 
people looked at the and went, oh, they beat Iran six to two. Well, I don't think England is that great or Iran is that bad. I mean, Iran is a, you know the twentieth ranked team in the world, so I don't think that truly shows how good or bad they are. Um, so I think this will be an interesting test of you know two managers who may not have jobs come the next World Cup. So we'll 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 see. It, it's I think this group is not considered the group of death by any means. Um, but I think this is a group that was going to be tough from the from the onset. It was not gonna be an easy qualification for anybody. Um, so nobody join our dupe by the river group chat because um it's literally just a bunch of dudes yelling to fire the national team manager. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's us telling Burhalter to get fired. And it's Steve telling for Southgate to uh, to 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 get to get fucked. And I just want a manager. I just want a manager. <laughs> That's pretty much how we're living. Listen, over there. listen I'm gonna call it Shocker. El uh, is gonna come. Uh, gonna be the uh, the Columbia national team manager. And he when he when he went when he comes back and leads the the Columbia national team to the World Cup, it'll be it'll it'll be his you know hand of God moment. Um, I already asked Jim if he was interested. I already pitched my my pitch to Jim, um, and he denied. So I tried. I tried Columbia. I tried to get us a, a legit manager, but it didn't. <laughs> oh, like, what's up, bro? We miss you, man. We need to Jesus' score praise against England. I am curious if there would <laughs> like there will be some rotation. I don't think the MMA midfield will come in against England. Dude, I um, he sees fun to watch. I will be curious though if any of the front three get rotated because Tim Weah looked good. Um, yeah, he did. Christian Pulisic was getting kicked around, so I'm curious if he gets put out. And I mean, John Sargent didn't look bad. I mean, he had some moments in the first half, but then it kind of tapered off. So I'll be. It'll be interesting to see how that how that plays out. Absolutely, man. Drummond, I can't believe Burke is gone. Drummond, you just missed it. We just discussed it, man. Listen, we love him. We'll be loved, man. He's going to be one of those players you will forever remember, man. But, hey, chase that bag, as Justin said. Chase that mother effing bag. Um, Yeah, Justin, Gio Reyna, any, any thoughts of why he didn't go out there at all? Injury? I mean, he said he was um, fine. I did hear something that he might have a slight knock. I was surprised that he didn't come on as a sub. Um, I, I mean, I guess though I understood because Serginho Das was on a yellow, and and and, and Weston McKinney was, and Weston McKinney he was also kind of struggling towards the end when he was in. Um, I, I all I thought I'd heard he'd had might have had a slight knock. But it is kind of surprising if it didn't. Uh, if he's available for the England game, he has to come off the bench. I would not see why he, he wouldn't. But with Burhalter, who knows, man? It's yeah. Who who knows with, with Burhalter these days? I I sure they fucking don't. All right. So kind of piggy off of a, a Twitter post I put out there. Do you think? If Burhalter were to come back to the MLS, he would be successful again. Or would his mindset just not catch up with today's MLS? I mean, I think he's a I think he's a better club manager than a national team manager. I think his style, the method that he's been trying to run is something that you can do at the club level. It's why like people would say that like Pep would be a great national team manager, and I'm like not really because you're not going to be able to pull Kevin De Bruyne and, you know, Erling Holland into the same national team. Like, <laughs> like I think there's some, you know, that, that work great with, with parts. And I think, and I think Burr Halter, when he's able to pull the pieces together, it is a good manager. So I think he could come back to the league. I, like I said, I definitely think he's a better, he's absolutely a, a better, a better cl a club manager than a national team manager. I mean, I, I agree. I also, I mean, obviously depends on the situation in, in which he would go to, but I feel like he would be good. Uh, look, I, I don't think he would be someone that if Jim would leave, the union would look at. I think that the union would be looking within where Ernsty boys got. Ernst probably has someone like in his like radar 
like some young mind that he, no one knows about in Europe. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see until that day comes. But it was uh, it was definitely interesting to see. But one thing that did annoy me though, Justin, was like you know you hear like these Euro snobs. They just bring the whole MLS narrative because Morris gets subbed in because DeAndre Yedlin gets subbed in. It's like this is why you don't play MLS players in the World Cup. And it's like. It literally has nothing to do with that. That was those were bad subs in the bad spot. It had nothing to do with the league they played in, man. That's just the way I looked at it. Yeah, and are they also forgetting that DeAndre Yedlin had a pretty successful stint with uh with Newcastle and in Turkey before he came back to the MLS? So like yeah, just yeah, don't let don't let that fit into uh their 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 bullshit narrative. I mean Tim Way, I mean listen. It's a it's a it's a youth product, but I mean Tim Way went through the MLS system. He's part of the Red Bull Academy before he got before he got sold off to PSG. Weston, Weston is Tyler Adams, Matt Turner yeah. is them. Like I, I think <laughs> you, you you can't. Josh Sargent even came through. It was at St. Louis. I know he's not like when they had a USL side. Like I, I think to that that narrative is absolutely ridiculous. Okay. Um, Drummond, I hate to say it, but U.S. will not advance in the knockout round. They will lose to England and beat Iran. Wales will beat Iran, and then last game, England will already be through and will draw. I think that's bold to assume that England is not going to want to step up and thrash Wales. I think that's a grudge match, and I don't think that's a, a, a an easy um, – and, and I think, again, England – I, 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 looking at them like, again, if you're like, oh, US is going to get stomped. It's like, it's looking at that. It's like, I, I, looking at that game, I do not see how, like, the Iran game is, is not a good test of, of how I think how England is. And I don't think, like, I think the game gets ugly. I think the US excels in those ugly games. And, I I think they're gonna draw. I, I don't. I thought they were gonna beat Wales, but I think they can draw. They can draw England. I I I don't understand why England's putting this high on a pedestal. Okay, but if the U.S. like just hypothetical, if the U.S. does not qualify, is this truly a setback for the national? No, team? because I think I mean this is a young squad. I think right. this group was gonna be challenging. Um, I, I think that second spot, like, I think everyone assumes England is good to the first spot, and I think that's a good assumption. But I think that second spot was going to be a tough, a tough ask. So, who knows? And, I mean, that's also throwing Iran completely out of the out of the way. Like, well, Iran could go in, and I think they, like, their striker had both goals. Their striker's pretty good. I think <laughs> you're... They're, you're overlooking that 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 Iran team. I think I would not be surprised if Iran beat Wales. I think people keep overlooking them. I, I would it would not surprise me. Is Iran really ranked forty or would you say twentieth in, in the in FIFA rankings? Yeah, they're a, they're a top twenty five so side. Annoying. That is so annoying. I hate Carlos Queiroz. I really hate that man. Screw that dude. <laughs> you know, it's literally, like, it's like second t- time in charge. I think. Oh, dude. Dude, he literally did not like he didn't do anything to help us qualify for the World Cup. Leaves Colombia and then he gets his Iran team again. Like, whatever, man. It is what it is. <laughs> it's so annoying. Uh, so all right, so real quick, what do you think will happen on Friday? Black Friday that's a great Black Friday matchup, by the way, against uh England. Yeah, I I I genuinely like it's a solid matchup. I think it's a great you know, post Turkey Day uh, game, I, I think it's gonna be. It, it is gonna be a nail biter. I think it's something that it it, it will be very very back and forth. I I think it'd be two two, a two two draw. I think there'll be a, a bit of there be there will absolutely be some goals, um, and I think if the game is very open, I think that fits the U.S. very well in terms of having a free flowing game. Justin, have you checked up on our on our boy Kevin Cho? <laughs> I have not. Rough. Um, Rough. He he may be 
he may have uh he may be you know uh in the fetal position somewhere because he thought that you know our, our, our Argentina would uh would distract him from his uh his uh SKC side. Um <laughs> I'm I'm sure we'll uh we'll need to put That's some feelers on to make sure to make sure that he isn't uh still uh you know still uh still 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 crying in the in in the corner. I just don't get how they they can't get it together, man. I it just I don't know. I, I, that, that's a rough, rough. I don't think I've in my lifetime, like so. I've been watching the World Cup since 06, right? I don't think I've witnessed an upset like this. I mean, can you remember one? Uh, I guess in your because I'm sure you watched 02. Yeah, you know, but like, like the USA beating Mexico, like, like, or like, like their run to the, you know, to the to the quarters, um. I think, or semi, I believe it. I think that was a not a massive upset, but I think it was big at the time. I think this is probably, arguably, the biggest upset I, I've seen to date. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. Um, and then my my last question here, Justin. Is Memo Cho the best goalkeeper in Concacaf history? <laughs> that was a nice save, man. Gets Lewandowski. No, I think he's a great goalie. I absolutely do not think he is the the best goalie in in Concacaf uh, history. I think uh, you know Kaylor Navas would, would like some words, and you know I think uh, Andre Blake, and, and I think uh, Andre Blake. Well, no, I, I think like I think Memo Cho is obs- arguably. One of the top goalies, I think, one top in terms of World Cup goalies all time. I mean, I hate the man for a lot of reasons, <laughs> but I, I, no, I think he's obviously <laughs> one of the best. One, he is one of the best goalies in Concacaf history. Uh, definitely not the best. I think Tim Howard would also like some words. Absolutely, man. Drama. That's wrong. That's really wrong, dude. If it wants to up on the screen, did it pop up? Okay, here we go. That's really wrong. Oh. That was really wrong. Did you really have to go there, huh? You really have to go there. Um, that that's that's a that's a that's a bad pull for a lot of reasons. Oh, oh. dude, man. Wow, drum it. We're really gonna end on that note, huh? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, man. Um, what was I was I was gonna say something to you? Oh, Justin, I I will say this. I, I know how you feel about Memo Cho, but I remember like what because I watched a little bit of it uh, with my girlfriend. I, we did see that 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 penalty kick. It is kind of cool that we did get to witness Memo Cho in person. Like I I feel like 15 years down the line, I'm gonna be telling my kids like I was right front row watching Memo Cho beat my union, our union. All right, he's gonna be my family, our union. Um, but it's pretty cool. That is pretty cool, Justin. If you kind of think about yeah, it, yeah. Uh- Listen, I, I will say absolutely, I despise him for a number of reasons. I, I, get, it. I get it, man. But I, I like it's one of those like, yeah, it's cool to say I got to watch him in in, in person. And listen, he is one of the best goalies in Concacaf. Um, I, I think it's he's someone who I well, I think will have to step up because I do not think that that team is going to score a lot. I think it's asking a lot, really. I think the only real piece of attacking threat they have is is Chucky Lozano. I mean, Jimenez, Raul Jimenez is absolutely not a shade of the striker he has been. Um, I think watching that game, Poland had way better of the chances. And I, I still don't think Mexico gets out of their group. I just think their lack of scoring is, is going to be a big hindrance on them. Absolutely, man. Drama, no worries, man. No worries. I'll also, I'll say this: that match in the World Cup is probably the darkest day in Colombian soccer. So, like, there's nothing that will ever trump that day. Um, and considering what happened after that tournament as well. But if you're an American, I understand like, that was a very big deal back because, like, a lot of people had Colombia as one of the favorites to win the World Cup. USA really had no chance in that one, and they played a really good game, and they deserved that win on that day. So, it's a little. A little history remembrance, man. But Justin, man, it's gonna be a fun World Cup, man. And uh, it sucks because I was looking forward to watching Olivier, which I don't know if Olivier will. I know he doesn't always start for Cameroon, 
but I wanted to watch it. And then I saw five in the morning. I was like, Olivier, I love you, buddy, but I got to sleep. <laughs> yeah. That's what, like, I, I have, uh, I have off of work tomorrow and I was looking and I'm like, I'm like, Oh, let me see what the games are. And I'm like, oh, 5 a.m. A game is decent. I might at least watch like the second half. I might wake up my usual alarm. And then I looked, it was Morocco and Croatia. And I'm like, now nah, I'm good, fam. I'm gonna I'm gonna sleep in because the eight o'clock game, Germany Japan. Now that's the yes. game I want to watch. Yes, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Spain and Costa Rica should be fun as well. Um, so we'll be definitely watching that. Like it's eleven o'clock game. And Belgium um, Canada, I think that'll be a yes. very interesting afternoon game. I'm, I I am very like as much as I joke that I you know saying that I don't think Mexico will advance in terms of Concacaf like. I always want to see the CONCACAF teams advance. Like, I think that's for, for the, sure for the, for the region. I think for the better, for the, the, the region in the soccer, I think it would be good for, for them. And I, I will be interested to see how, how, you know, how Belgium handles Alfonso Davies and Jonathan David and Kyle Aaron. Like they got some serious firepower and, uh, and they're I, hungry, dude. They're hungry. Yeah. this will be interesting. And, and, you know, there is a uh, there is a union uh, a union tie to uh, to Canada. Their uh, their center back Stephen Vittoria, and that that's a name that uh, I'm for for the union OGs. Uh, myself, you know, Mike Thomas. My I actually know someone like Mike Thomas knows that name. He definitely uh, that man. He his time here wasn't the wasn't the best, but you know, hey, he's got he was here for a season. Dude, that's what we do for you on this podcast, guys. We bring out names like Steve Victoria. Like, that's all we do here on Dude by the River. Yeah. So it should, yeah, should be a lot of fun. should be a lot of fun. Make sure you guys check them out. Check out the World Cup, guys. Enjoy it, man. It's it's here every four years. So please take that in, all in. But uh, that's what do it for this episode of Dude by the River. We're going to continue bringing you some off-season stuff. We'll have, we have a nice interview next week, which I'm excited to to uh, show you guys. It's going to be a fun and relaxed one. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Make sure you guys hit this like button. Subscribe for more live viewings. We're available on Apple, Google, Spotify. Find us under Duke by the River Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Justin, off-season podcaster Friedberg. I am in Parcero Philly. And we're telling you guys to dupe on. Enjoy the World Cup match.